Uh, good morning. So I'm Lucas, and I'm on the negative side. So I will be arguing to keep the system of the Electoral College. And on Michael's first claim, he brought up as one of these significance claims that it was too much power to the swing states. However, the, when uh, what a swing state is considered is the states that switch back and forth between the elections um, often, and the um, states they could have a large number of swing voters. Uh, meaning that they switch back and forth between the Democrat and Republican Party. The main swing states that are considered are Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, and Wisconsin. And they sw swing back and forth often, but if you get rid of the Electoral College, it, the swing states aren't a cause of, or they aren't an effect of the Electoral College, they're an effect of the people switching back and forth. You have swing states because the other states, they're not swing states because the um, they are so solid in what they want and they know what they want. When the other states are going, when this actual swing states are switching back and forth because they want different aspects. And getting rid of the Electoral College, it would take, it would take um, the way so that the person who becomes president would only really have to campaign to 10 different states, or because it would only take the states of California, Texas, Florida, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio, and Georgia to win the popular vote of every single election. Those eight states would add up to be um, over 150 million um, people, and that would outweigh the population. Um, another thing that was said was um, that it is undemocratic. However, there are two different types of democracies. There's a pure democracy and there's a representative democracy. The United States right now has a representative democracy and it is the citizens rule through the representatives who they elect periodically in order to keep them accountable. The power of the people to control their government is thus limited by the actions of their uh, elected representatives. However, the other type of democracy is a pure or direct democracy which all decisions are made directly by the people, and that's what it would become with the Electoral College for, uh, being banned. And the um, so third sub-point that he made was that it would increase voter pop, uh, population. However, in 2008, the Census Bureau Voting Survey the reasons were that there was a lack of interest was 13%, a dislike of the candidates was 13%, and um, illness or disability was 15%, and others were too busy or they had conflicting schedules, that was 17%. There wasn't a real mention of, um, they didn't like the system of the Electoral College, because the system of the Electoral College is usually attacked after the um, election, depending on, whether, depending on whose candidate won. If the Republicans win the Electoral College, the Democrats will attack the system. But if the Democrats win it, then the Republicans will attack the system. The inherency claim is that um, the Constitution stops it from being changed. And it was written in the Constitution by the Founding Fathers for several reasons. They were unanimous in their decision that no single entity, being the people or an agent of the government, should be given unlimited power. Achieving the separation of powers ultimately became their highest priority. As a part of their plan to do separate powers, the founders created the Electoral College as a method by which people could choose the highest government leader, the president, while avoiding some of the least uh, dangerous things of a direct election. If the election depended solely on the popular vote, then the candidates would be limited uh, campaigning to heavily populated areas or specific regions. They would, be they would be campaigning to those states that I said have the highest population, and it wouldn't fix the problem of the state of them not campaigning in the smaller states. And another problem, er, another problem with what they had to say is that if they fixed, right now they're saying that the Electoral College excludes the, po uh, the vote of many people, because of the system that it uses of winner take all. However, it wouldn't fix the problem that 40% of the people, 40% um, of the people already don't vote, and if that is not increased, then it's a, sort of like a good amount of people still aren't being accounted for. 
Moving on to the solvency claim, the solvency claim would be a problem because if you fix that plan, then it would ultimately influence the House of Representatives and the Senate because both of those numbers add up to be the number of the Electoral College. Right now in the Electoral College, there's 538 representatives, 435 um, representing the House members, 100 representing the Senate, and then three representing the District of Columbia. And if you change that number, it would also influence the House of Representatives and the Senate because they both do the exact same thing as the Electoral College. They are um, representative of the same population that the Electoral College is representative of. Thank you. Can we take one minute? Yes, you can. You have five minutes total per for the whole debate to use. You whatever you use now, you. You don't have later, but I'll count the time down.